What's up guys? So today we are going to talk about Johnny Candido quitting powerlifting and why that's going to result in huge muscle gains. All right, so I am obviously being facetious there. A lot of you guys know Johnny Candido. He is a popular YouTuber. He's somewhat popular on Instagram. He's been in this space for a long time. I watched him back in, I think 2014 was when I was first introduced to him. And he has been a big name in the powerlifting, the natural powerlifting community. And why that is significant is because he made a recent video about how he may never total more than he has in the past ever again, and the reason why. So we will link below to that video, and maybe we can throw in a clip or two here. But he talks about how basically his, his motivation and the desire to hit those totals is no longer there. And I think for him, like a lot of people, they get to that, you know, maybe the last 2% that they could maybe eke out over many years, and it's just not worth it for them. But I have two predictions for what is going to happen now that he has. My first prediction is that in terms of total muscle mass, there will be almost no difference now that he's going to be switching training. My second prediction is that despite having almost no difference in muscle mass during this transition, there will be posts and comments about how there is a huge transition. And I've already seen comments in the comment section on the video saying that this is going to result in a great physique and now he's going to have more hypertrophy focus and it's going to cause all of this muscle growth. And this is something that I've seen time and time again, that people create this false dichotomy between powerlifters and bodybuilders. And obviously there are huge differences at the extremes, especially among enhanced lifters. However, in most cases, the differences are not that great in terms of the end result after years and years and years of training. First of all, a lot of people compete in both, right? So you've got people like Eric Helms and you've got people like Alberto Nunez who compete in both. And while the training is different, same thing with Omar Isoff, while he hasn't competed in, uh, in bodybuilding, he has still looked generally the same. And for the sake of interesting videos, he will talk about specialization in hypertrophy and he will talk about a specialization in powerlifting. But really, when you've seen him over the years, have you seen these dramatic differences when he talks about, well, now we're gonna be making those gains, do we actually see a huge difference in his physique? No, because he's been at this for 15 plus years. And so you're just not gonna see this huge difference over that period of time but even over a long period of time when the training is not that different. So what do I mean by not that different? Well, I have run Candido's programs. I actually have a review on the channel of one of his programs. I believe it's his six week bench program, but I've also done his six week powerlifting program and they were great. I, I recommend them. I think they're great routines, but within them, you can see that there are plenty of high rep sets, plenty of isolation exercises done. So it's not like these powerlifters are doing singles and doubles and triples, and that's all they do. Even back with 531, there was the uh, BBB, Big But Boring. And after your 531 training, you would do, I believe, five sets of 10 with these accessory exercises. That is a lot of volume. And these weren't always just compound exercises. Plenty of times, these were isolation exercises. So in general, powerlifters don't train so differently in terms of what's gonna net the results. The actual program will look different. Frequency might look different. The weights that they're working with absolutely will be different because they need to have periods where they are training with very heavy weight. I mean, that's one of the greatest correlations with strength gains is working with heavier weights. But in terms of hypertrophy and the actual end result, it's not dramatically different, again, unless taken to the extremes. I could see somebody coming in and say, well, look at Tom Platt versus Dr. Squat. I think it was um, Fred Hatfield. And I think something, I don't remember the exact numbers, but Tom Platt did way, way more reps at a lighter weight, but then he couldn't one rep max the same as Dr. Squat. And that's common, of course. Again, you're talking the extremes, you're talking people who are doing this for their, their whole life, and you're talking about a lot of performance enhancing drugs, not to mention just you gravitate towards what you're good at. It doesn't mean for a given individual they ever would have actually hit either of those extremes. But among naturals, you just don't often see these massive differences, especially when they just switch to training for a certain block. So if you look at Candido, the guy has huge muscular legs. Now it's not as noticeable at a higher body fat percentage, but he has huge thick legs and a reasonably impressive upper body. And when I say I don't think much is gonna change, I think in terms of total muscle mass at a given body fat percentage, because going with my second prediction that people will say there's a big difference, 
I would not be at all surprised to see that more aesthetic shots are posted and leaner shots are posted. And so if you take a bulked up powerlifter in general and they cut down and now they're taking these selfies, it can look like, wow, they've focused on hypertrophy training. Now it's a totally different focus, but the muscle was already there. So when I say, I don't think it's gonna make a difference, it's not that I don't think he's gonna look better. It's not that it's not gonna, you know, maybe get, obviously he's gonna maybe try to get leaner or whatever his goals are. I mean that it's not going to net that much more muscle mass. Now, maybe there was an area that he kind of neglected, right? Maybe he didn't do much bicep training and so he'll gain a very small amount on his biceps. These things are possible, but I just think that there's this false dichotomy that is often mentioned with bodybuilders versus powerlifters, especially a false dichotomy when it comes to naturals that is just really not there. I think I had a podcast with Mike Isertel where he talked about, oh, well, what happens when powerlifters switch to hypertrophy training like bodybuilders, they blow up. And I was like, it, I can't think of any examples of that within naturals. I, I mean, I can't even think of that many examples of that within enhanced people, but I'm sure it exists. But among naturals, like who can I think of where they they became they went from bodybuilders to powerlifters and all of a sudden it was this dramatic difference i don't think of many examples i have friends who have competed in both and you know both of them have a lot of muscle mass it's just not something that i think is going to be that different now i'm talking about johnny candido here specifically but really this is just more of a general topic because one of the things he says is that he might get maybe 10 pounds more on a lift after years and years and years but that's just not worth it for him at this point and I mentioned this with uh, Jeff Alberts, and I mentioned this with Cornelius Parkin on a recent podcast, where for a lot of people, for most people really, it doesn't make that much sense to try to get to 99 or 100% of your genetic potential. If you're watching this channel, if you're like me, then maybe you are that person that really just wants to see how far you can push it. Again, like Steve Hall has mentioned, things like that. But for most people, it often doesn't make sense, and you might be spinning your wheels for a long time. So from a motivation standpoint, I could totally see why Candido might say, hey, you know what, I've gotten really far, maybe injuries have built up, maybe it's just not motivating, but if he can switch it to another focus, then now it's a new goal and that you can really actually have progress within that endeavor. Again, I always say it's not more muscle mass, maybe net muscle mass at a given body fat percentage, but it doesn't mean you can't progress in whatever you're doing, right? People go from powerlifting to strongman. Now there's a whole new technique to it. There's a whole new endeavor for you to progress at. And even though it might not have been your primary focus before, it's a good way to stay active and engaged. I've talked about this for myself. I know at this point, short of going on performance enhancing drugs, I'm not going to really gain any new muscle probably ever again, but there are certain lifts that I can progress at. And maybe there's some other sport that I could get involved in. After a while, if you're doing this for 20 plus years, you're gonna to have to find ways to keep it interesting. And even Jeff had said, Jeff Alberts had talked about how he's probably not gonna gain any more muscle at this point, and maybe there's other ways he can focus on it, focus on progress as a bodybuilder, but not more new muscle mass. So I think it's a great thing to do to transition, to stay motivated, because at the end of the day, if you're consistent, that's the most important and not being super motivated at one time and then dropping off and being super motivated again and then dropping off. And you know, to be the best at any given endeavor, it is going to take pushing yourself very far, right? Pushing yourself to that 99th percent or 100% of whatever your potential is. But let's also just step back and realize that that is not necessarily the difference between, you know, you'll, you'll see sometimes these champions and, and people who are scoring very high, whether it's bodybuilding or whatever, and they say, it's because I do all of this. And, and oftentimes that's a huge factor, but a lot of these people who are pros would also be pros and stomp most people if they went to 90% of their potential. But going back to somebody like Cornelius Parkin, the guy was insanely strong in high school. I just saw Jay Culler say that he squatted 700 pounds as a high schooler, right? I mean, if, if you have the genetics in general to be the top of any sport, even you at 90% is gonna be way better than most people, right? And, and so it really is probably just a pound or two or three over a lifetime would be the difference for some of these people. And again, if you're like a Steve Hall where this is your entire life, I think that makes sense. But for a lot of people, it doesn't make sense. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to touch on this because I thought it was very interesting when I saw Candido post, one, it's just significant in the fitness industry, but then two, to see some of the comments saying, oh, it's gonna be this huge game changer. And, and in reality, it's not to be demotivating, it's more just, I think it's important to realize that the different types of training that most people do in this space, 
generally doesn't result in that much of a difference unless taken to the extremes. And there was a study probably about four or five years ago now, and they showed that as long as volume was equated, it didn't matter if they were doing triples or they were doing sets of 12. And in reality, that's kind of like powerlifting versus bodybuilding training, right? As far as the stereotypical ways of training. So I say find the training that you enjoy, that you can be consistent with, and then make progress within your niche there, whatever that is for you, whether that is more geared towards strength or hypertrophy, as long as it's something that you can be consistent with, I'm usually in favor of it. And it doesn't have to be the perfect number of days per week, the certain perfect exercise. I think the consistency is by far the most important thing. So guys, if you liked the video, give it a like, comment down below, give me your thoughts on this. If you have actually experienced any dramatic changes, and I'm not saying in general, like you, okay, you started to eat a lot more, you saw these changes. I'm saying just from one specific training to another, you saw huge differences, uh, because that was something I talked with Eric Helms about. I said, you know, for me, as long as I was consistent and I was training really hard and I was eating well, the progress was about the same, and I don't really see these giant differences, but maybe you guys have a different anecdote. So post below, and I will see you next time.